because education and knowledge comes before anything. You cannot perform something right unless you know it. Right? None of us can perform salah unless somebody showed us first how it's done. Otherwise, how would you know how to perform it? Or how to fast and when to and, uh, start your fasting and when to break it and so forth and so on. So knowledge comes before the action itself. That's how things are interdependent and we have to understand. If I exceed the time, just give me a signal and then I'll start for the salah so we don't want to miss that. Right? And then beneficial knowledge is God conscious. God conscious. In essence, that the person is always self-policing. If you attain that level of knowledge that you say, okay, I am alone in this setting. There's nobody looking at me. No police, no, no, no other authority. And you can stop yourself from committing wrong. Then you have a level of that beneficial knowledge. Because there is no taqwa or God fearing or God consciousness without beneficial knowledge. You have to understand that it benefits in one way or another to self-police. It's good for all. Not only for yourself, but good for all. If you came to that conclusion, then you are a person who is in, in, in his way or her way uh, to attain it. It's not exploitative or oppressive. In other words, knowledge itself does not guarantee you for it, that it would be used for good. A lot of the things that are used right now to destroy other human beings or to keep them oppressed were invented by people who were not. People who had attained some level of knowledge, who were experts in one thing or another. But the purpose or the reason or the motive might, have been good, might not have been good. So in other words, keeping the motive clean and being to really serve God and do something good for the society, it really in, uh, it helps us attain the beneficial knowledge. Now we are living, of course, at a time when we are countered with the likes of, for example, and I have to insert this one because it proves the opposite of, of uh, beneficial knowledge. You know, someone who is brilliant on one field, brilliant mind, when he discusses politics, is one of the best polemicists that this country, or perhaps in the world, argue. I'll, I'll close with this. Still have some more to finish. Uh, perhaps he's one of the best uh, polemicists uh, in, in the world. Uh, Christopher Hitchens. How many of you know Christopher Hitchens? Yeah, quite a few. Okay. Among other things, what he has written is a book called God's Not Great. God is not great. And you can see where he's going. Christopher Hitchens is brilliant when it comes to discussing politics, history, literature. You know, one of the best people to have on your side. Take him out of that field, put him in the field of religion. He turns into an eighth grader. In his thinking, in his reason, in his logic, and nobody takes him to test. Because when you read the book, for example, and you say, SubhanAllah, you know, if somebody is asking and questioning, how can God be so merciful if God allows diseases to be out there, for example, you know, or oppression to be out there? These are some of the questions that the atheists are nowadays really selling across campuses. In, in, in various circles and so forth and so on. How can that God be merciful? SubhanAllah. You know, how can the human beings differentiate good from bad if they don't know what bad is first? How can we appreciate this light if we don't know darkness, for example? The only time that we can appreciate the light is when there is darkness to compare it to. How can you appreciate health if there is no illness? Or wealth if there is no poverty? And so forth and so on. If everything did not have the opposite, how can you value that? 
How can you aspire for that? You can't. But here is brilliant mind on one area cannot really add one plus one equals two in this case. When it comes to religion, everybody goes blind. Because the learning, what he had learned, is not beneficial. Now. What he had learned is he's trained to function very well in that circle. Take him out of that circle, put him in a different circle. You know, any little kid can criticize what he has written. And nobody takes him to task. He and others, and I'm just giving you his name as an example, not only him out there, but there are a lot of others like him. And nobody questions him and says, what have you read in the Quran? Have you read from A to Z? Are you an expert in this? How do you write on something that you have not even read? And that's where the problem is. People gain this knowledge without thinking, without having the right intention for it. And they produce something very, very destructive when it comes to religion. In their field, they're very good. They can function very well. And we have to be fair. He's good at what he does. Except when you put him in discussing religion, all his biases, negativities, everything else shows up. And I'll stop here because I have a signal to stop. No, no, you can go. Now, I'll just say five minutes or more. Oh, five minutes? <laughs> Don't bother with that. I'll say five minutes. Okay, I'll close with this story then, because since they said that we are going to have the question and answer afterwards. Sayyidina Musa, or Moses, he was one of the prophets that asked oftentimes about knowledge. He even asked he was Kareem Allah, he spoke to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, all the three in uh, religions of the Abrahamic religions believe the same thing, right? So he spoke to Allah. And then he would ask, oh Allah, have you created a person who is more knowledgeable than I? And we know the whole story. I mean, if you read, and uh, you know, all of you read, read it, and today we in Juma, most of you have, I'm sure. Surah al And uh, an example of that is, is, is found in that particular chapter, in the cave chapter. But in this particular narration, the Creator God tells Moses, I mean, says, it's not the quality, I mean, it's not the quantity that matters in knowledge, but the quality. Something that's very consistent in the Prophet, I mean, when he was saying, Ballahu anni, walau ayah. Spread about me or tell others about me, even if you have to just use one ayah, one verse in the Quran, just deliver that. Because that is beneficial knowledge and it will make a change in people. They learn that one thing, and if they focus on it, it will change their life, gradually, of course, and put them through that process. So going back to Moses, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells, oh Moses, there are five principles. Five principles if you were to follow, the knowledge benefits you. If you don't follow those five principles, it doesn't matter how much knowledge you gain, it's not going to help you anymore. Anyway. So what are those five principles? And this is where we really need to pay attention. This is very critical. The first principle, Allah says, don't fear anyone else's authority so long as my authority exists. And my authority exists, it never vanishes. Why is that important? In other words, oftentimes people of knowledge tend to shy away when it comes to defending that which is just or speaking in, in the defense of the, the, the oppressed, for example. Why? Because they're afraid of the authority. Somebody might punish them in doing so, right? So here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, do you want to read really knowledge to help you and to become beneficial? Don't fear anybody other than me. In other words, not to be uh, arrogant, or, you know, as some people say, God's on my side, you know, I'll do anything. No, that's not the case. We're talking about when you are really on the right path and defending that which is just. Don't be fearful, because a fearful person can never do right in this thing. Can never stand for the, uh, to defend the, the, the oppressed. Food. So don't fear anyone, Allah says, in this case. 
The second principle, Allah said, don't fear that you will lose your sustenance. In other words, somebody's going to fire you or somebody's going to decide never to hire you or label you as a uh, person not employable or what have you. Don't worry about it. As long as my treasury is full and my treasury is full, it never goes out. This is principle number two. In other words, don't worry about authority regardless of who they are, as long as you are on the right. They might imprison you, they might do a lot of things to you, but to you or something, but stay focused. Do what's right. You're not trusting, you're not supposed to transgress against anyone. But standing for justice is a right, universal right, that everyone should be. So in other words, don't hold back in those kind of situations out of fear. So, and also, do not worry about if somebody's going to fire you or somebody's going to stop your sustenance. Because so let's say, I'm the one who gives you sustenance. And as long as my treasury is full, you don't have to fear that. You will get it. If this door closes, there will be other doors that will open and so forth. And so, forth. so the third one, and he's told, you know, Moses is told, don't busy yourself finding faults in other people. So long as you yourself have a fault. And the human being is never free of fault. Let's pay more attention to this part. Think of how often do we spend in talking about other people's shortcomings. And very seldom do we examine our own shortcomings. But we know and memorize everybody else's shortcomings. We can tell you. We can write books about everybody. <laughs> but in our case, we don't. We don't look at ourselves. And beneficial knowledge, the center of it, by the way, is introspection. Reflection and introspection, the two driving type in, in, in wheels that it has. Reflection and introspection. You reflect on the things around you, what caused them, why do they exist, why are we here, and so forth and so forth. And then introspection in the sense that you examine yourself. You put yourself to test. And you ask yourself, am I doing the right thing? And so forth. So the third we cover, right? So far the third question? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> OK, third we cover. Fourth one, Allah says, never stop fighting the shaitan because he has a sword to fight you till eternity. Fighting in this sense, not physical, because you don't see Shaka, right? But you resist every temptation, every little trap, every little trick that you come across. Because he has sworn never, never to stop fighting you and pushing you to go straight. So keep that in mind, Allah Last one, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, never feel too comfortable that I would not put you to test. Don't get too comfortable. Yeah. That I'm not going to be tested. I'm better than anybody else. You know, I have a good health. I have the good looks. I have the good money, right? Re recognition, fame, all the things that people aspire to. I came from a well-known family, right? And so forth and so on. And I would not be tested. People don't say that, but they act like it, right? Allah says, don't feel too comfortable. Because he's reminded Moses, and he said, remember where Adam was tested. He was not even in this world. So if I can test Adam in heaven, I can test anybody, even in heaven, let alone in, on earth. So don't get too comfortable. Always think of what is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala trying to teach me in this situation that I'm in. If I'm facing problems, what is the lesson that I'm supposed to leave with? You know, at the end of the day, what am I supposed to learn from? It? And that should be our case. And that's what beneficial knowledge is all about. So these five principles Moses was told, if you were to do, then knowledge will help you and help others. If you were not following these five principles, your knowledge is going to get you a nice car, perhaps, and a nice home, as we said, and so forth and so on, but nothing beyond that. And I hate to say this, but most people nowadays are fixated or programmed, either through their parents or the cultural background that they came from, to not look for anything except that good life in this world. That nice car, 
you know, nice house and so forth. And there's nothing wrong with that, don't get me wrong. It's good to look for that. You have every right, Islamically you do. But if that's the only aim that you have, and the only aim that you're attaining knowledge and learning, then you're really selling yourself short and your mind short, and your potential as a human being, granted by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala the faculty to really develop intellectually and all of that, and to make a positive change, you're selling yourself short. And with that thought, I leave you in the